Empire. Welcome to the latest edition of All's Caps with former Capitals defenseman Carl Osner. I'm AP hockey writer Steve Wino. Dog days of, of, of August now, Carl. Uh, not a whole lot going on with the Capitals. We'll go around the NHL today, uh, talk about kind of what summers are like around the NHL. Next week on the show, uh, Brian McNally from NBC Sports Washington. Have some other fun guests line up the rest of the summer. We'll get into summer workouts and everything. But first of all, uh, what, this time of year, August, right now, you're, you can have some fun because you're not playing. When you were playing, what was this time of year like in terms of kind of, A, just training, but also getting your family and every, and, and everyone kind of settled for a season? Yeah, exactly. So it, it, it's a pretty, it's an interesting month because, so actually I was just at Kettler or uh, MedStar, sorry, uh, this morning and Tuesday morning uh, on the ice with with a couple guys that are in town. And so so it's, it's an interesting part of the summer because depending on where you are, your skates are either really starting to pick up or you want to skate and there's just not that many options so like for example here in in dc there's you know there's maybe four or five guys that that come out and skate you might get a couple of college players that'll come out and you're just trying to feel the ice again right you got probably new some new gear uh, that you're trying to break in and um you just want to feel the puck and feel the ice and and try and remember what it's like to to skate because it's you know even though this is second nature for for all the players it still takes a second right your timing and this and that so so you're using typically the end of july beginning of august is just to just to start feeling good on the ice um you don't really want to ramp anything up right now there's no point you still have a month month and a half left until training camp so so you're 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 trying to trying to build some muscle you're 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 working on all the strength training and stuff like that um and and depending on the player you know you're in the gym five times a week and on the ice maybe two or three times a week um but it's it's a weird time of the year i never i would just i just was saying this uh on on tuesdays that i like to when i was 16 through probably 24 i'd be on the ice starting june 1st like three times a week and then july i'd be four times sometimes five and august would be usually five times every week and and then as you as you play a little bit longer you uh start a little later and a little later and a little later and then it becomes august 1st where you're finally stepping on the ice to because you you just need as much time off as you possibly can so that's what's going on right now for most of these guys they're they're starting they're continuing to kind of build in their on their weight room programs um and then adding in some of the more explosive stuff and getting into some plyos and all that uh and speed work and then on the ice yeah you're just trying to you're trying to survive you're trying to feel like a hockey player again because it it goes away pretty fast it's it's fun hearing all the guys from like previous eras talk about how they would just show up to training camp to get in shape these guys like it, it's always cool like an alan may or craig lock and those guys talking about how training camp used to be guys like sweating out the summer now guys are sweating out the summer the entire time Absolutely. Well, it all depends too on when you're and when you're coming back to your city, right? So some guys they're so strict with it, whether it's their program or just wanting to soak up every last day of summer, and they won't come back to their city until you know two or three days before um, before camp starts. But when you have kids, your kids got to be in school, so you come back a little bit earlier and and you get into the swing of things here. But yeah, some some guys just they want to take as much summer off as they possibly can to decompress and and rest and all that stuff. And, and it is nice to come back to camp and use that. If you're confident enough in your position on the team to use that as your, you get into on ice shape, right? Like you, you can still go out there and feel the puck on your own and, and do that kind of stuff. But you don't really want to bag yourself if you don't have to, and you want to use training camp to do that. But, but at the same time, everybody is in, is, is pretty much in peak performance. You know, they're top shape from, from three months of, of training pretty hard. So you don't really want to fall, fall behind, but, but I don't know if it's true or not. I heard a legendary story that I think it was uh, about Ryan gets laugh. I want to say the year after they won the cup that uh, he just, he told the trainers that um, they packed up his gear or whatever. And he said, no, 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 I'll keep it. I'll see it when I get back for training camp. <laughs> and then just didn't touch it all summer long. And you know, Getz is one of those guys that can afford to do that because he's just so damn skilled. 
not many not many players can can do that and and be successful but it doesn't happen very often anymore I know that I would I would pick up my gear less and less as the years went on uh, in the summertime but everybody's kind of it's personal if you need you need to work on something you get on the ice a little bit more otherwise I don't know I, I I'm such a big believer in the mental side of the game and you need to do a full reset in the summers um, with how long the season is so I tried to be smart about smart about it especially as like I said when you get a little bit older in the league but it's 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 weird I mean it's a it's a tough month and it's so hot outside too so you just try and you're just trying to do as much as you can well what were you doing at Metstar just getting in from the heat like were you skating did you do men's league games yeah no I was skating yeah I just uh, I had told uh, Mark Nemish the strength and conditioning coach that if he needed another body to let me know because you know I could always use the extra work just to just to try and stay in shape um and so so yeah I went out with uh uh, who was out there? Uh, Hathaway and Eller um, the first day, along with uh, Nemo's uh, son Kendall and uh, Laviolette's son uh, Peter, Peter Junior, I guess. And uh, yeah, Peter Junior was at was at development camp. Yeah, exactly. So it was just us uh, us five out the first day, and then uh, Snively joined us uh, today. So we had a good skate, just just a little sweat. I think everybody pretty much is wearing new skates, and so. Every, anyone who knows what it's like to put on new skates, your crossovers are, aren't aren't all that great. Your strides aren't all that great. So we were all kind of slipping and sliding out there. But um, yeah, it was just just a good skate just to get kind of the legs going a little bit, a little bit of a sweat. And then as soon as we were done, they all went to go work out and I went to go, uh, you know, do what retired people do. And so I was I was off after that and um, hopefully get out another time or two. But we'll see how the schedule goes. It's just uh you know, you don't really want to get in the way of, of their training and stuff, but it definitely seems the fact that I was even allowed to go out on the ice seems like things are kind of, uh, loosening a little bit with all the restrictions they had with people around the rink and, and all that. So I think that's, uh, that's a good thing for fans and, and a good thing for uh, for the players and their family and friends that want to come around the rink a little bit more. Yeah, it's been nice. I've been out at, at Commander's Camp. My, much of my summer is going out to Commander's Camp, which is a plug for li- listen to Lockdown Commanders with John Kime, also on Empire Media. But those re- restrictions are gone from that. Uh, when we come back, I want to ask you actually more uh, about those guys who are, who are skating now at MedStar and kind of the ramp-up period. We'll talk a little bit about what's going on around the NHL, Nazem Kadri, maybe to the New York Islanders, maybe already to the New York Islanders. We don't know. Um, um, and, and later on, just chatting about kind of what is to come in the, in the next few weeks because it is this off season, but we do have some capitals. Either, just even the schedule coming out was exciting and, and all that stuff. Uh, we'll talk about that all, all next when we come back on All Caps. Welcome back to All Caps, former Capitals defenseman Carl Alsner. I'm AP hockey writer Steve Wino. Even Carl, even you bringing up Joe Snively's name reminded me that we forget about him so much. And, and Brian McClellan did. So much in the off season of adding Dylan Strome, adding Connor Brown, bringing back Marcus Johansson. But you're, you're skating with Joe Snively. We got to see a little taste of what he could do last year. Uh, what do you make of, of of this kid who's clearly like obviously a little undersized, but but can play? Showed he can play in the NHL. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I can't remember. I don't know what his exact stats were, but he had like some like seven points in eleven games or something like that last year. Like. You know, he, he made a pretty pretty significant impact. Yeah, seven points in twelve games. That's a that's pretty impressive to do, especially as as a guy who'd be considered undersized, five nine. But just that was my first real up close uh um view of, of what he can do and, and and he's quick, he's got a good shot, he's good hands. Um for sure the most impressive hands um of, of us that were doing this little stick handling drill this morning. Um, so it was, it was, it was really cool to see. And I, I, I like him. Uh, I like his game. I like that he's local as well. I think that's huge. I'm sure that the caps would love to have, uh, someone like him, you know, in the lineup oh, for, sure. for the full season, just for that impact alone. I think that would be massive. Um, but yeah, you're right. I mean, they, they, they did a lot of tinkering. And so, uh, if anything, I would think that there, he's got maybe a little bit extra motivation to, uh, to try and prove that they didn't maybe didn't need to bring in, you know, as many, as many players. And, you know, he wants to slot in in this role. So it, it, he, I was very impressed and, and he, it, it's not, I mean, he's 26, I guess. So he's not like he's uh 20, 21, but it's not often that a, a younger guy using air quotes um, kind of takes control of a practice. And, uh, and that's what he was doing this morning, wanting to do these specific drills and, and uh, you know, pretty good at kind of, 
explaining what what we should work on and stuff and i thought that was i thought that was kind of neat it was impressive for uh you know for i guess uh what would have been the one of the younger younger people out there on the ice so yeah i i think he's i i mean i would love to see him play full time and and stay healthy i think that would be amazing for for this whole area yeah and, and and he will be part of this team's future because you could see even the moves now dylan strom is on a one-year deal connor brown's on a one-year deal marcus johansson's on a one-year deal that even connor sherry only has a year left on his contract, that as soon as Brian McClellan and the organization want to kind of push into a, a youth movement, you've got Protus, you've got Snively, you've got McMichael, Hendricks LaPierre. Like, this could become a real young team real fast if they want it to be. But for now, you understand even Lars Eller only has a year left on his contract. I, I like the approach, and, I, and I've talked to Capitals t- season ticket holder fans, of uh, friends of mine, who weren't kind of sure of, of kind of what – the offseason look like and they would have liked to see the younger kids play I have no problem with loading up for a year and saying let's go for this with as much as we can right now you hope you get Nick back and then Snively Protus all these guys become part of your future am I wrong here no I think you're right you kind of have to do that right like you can't there's so many different ways to go about it. you can completely tear a team down and and wait a bunch of years and hopefully they're good but I kind of like being you know still being uh, relatively competitive while while developing some players, you know, giving them overcooking giving them, players, right? Like guys who guys who probably yeah. are ready, but you give them an extra year of development. The Capitals love doing that. Yeah, exactly. You 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 can eat something overcooked. You can't eat it undercooked. So you might as well <laughs> let, them, let them stay in there for a little bit longer. So I, I I don't I don't have any issue with that. As a player, it's unfortunate when you you're you know you get pushed back maybe an extra year because somebody else gets brought in. But in the end, it's it's probably not a bad thing. It hopefully is hopefully is good for confidence, but. But yeah, I think I, I think that the prospect pool looks pretty solid, and you hope that these these players can kind of blossom into uh, not just everyday NHLers, but but impacting NHLers. That's kind of what you're always hoping for. And I always go back to Pitt, like Pitt it was it was able to find find some players that could come in and and out of nowhere essentially and and be be uh, stars for their team and, and impact players right away. So yeah, you're hoping that you can find some of those as well. But I, I think that the Caps are in a pretty good position. I think the team this year can be fairly competitive as long as, um, you know, I always go back to the goaltending. Goaltending pans out, of course, and uh, and and is you know as good as it can be. I think that I think that the team's in a pretty good spot. Yeah, speaking of impact players, this is a Capitals podcast, but as we're recording this right now, Nazem Kadri still has not signed a contract that we know of. There's been all this rumor about the New York Islanders and and, and all of that, and Lou Lamorello, for as secretive as he is, he may have already signed Nazem Kadri and just isn't telling anyone yet. But it would not be good news for the Capitals to have for Lane Lambert to get Nazem Kadri, right? Yeah, I mean, ideally you'd like to keep as many good players out of the out of the division as possible, but it's just not realistic. And you know what? I'm not sure. I, I don't really know exactly how to how to describe Kadri, you know, and and what the contract might be like. It's it's just a tough sample size, right? Like he's he's been a he's been a good player. He's been a good player career. for a lot of years, right? Yeah, but but now he's trying to get into that great player category, right? And that that to me needs needs a little bit more. Um, I don't know. I think you need a little bit more of a resume than that. And so I, it's hard to say. But if the Islanders, you know, want him and 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 you know can fit him in there and and think he's going to be that much of an impact for them, then it's a good play. Good play by them. But I just I, I don't know. I'm I think. And like, you sound skeptical. Every, like, like everything that I do, it's a, it's a guess. Everything I say, it's a guess. But I, I, I don't think that he's going to be able to, to produce the same way that he did last year. You know, it just seems it seems maybe a little bit far-fetched for, for that player. To, to me, though, if he goes back to the Colorado Avalanche or, or losing our, our old friend Andre Burakovsky, uh, like, he would fit in perfectly back there if they can make room for him because he doesn't have to be a first-line player. He can be a second-line guy, complementary with the McKinnons, the Rantanens, and those kind of guys. Oh, absolutely. That would be the, that would for sure. That would be number one spot to go because they know what to expect out of you. The fans know what to expect out of you for sure. Less pressure. Um, uh, yeah, I, I think that would be the place to be. I'm, I'm surprised that that hasn't been able to be worked out already. Um, so yeah, but they have, yeah, they have so many good players there. Nachushkin, who kind of really was uh, important for them this year too. So th- there, there's a lot of, there's a lot of depth on that team. And I think he would, he would fit in really nicely there, but it's so hard to go from one team as a uh, as a second line guy or someone who's maybe complimentary and then all of a sudden be the guy um, in a new city where fans yep. don't really know you and and the staff might not know you quite as well. It, it's a really, really hard transition to make. So, you know, I, even if he does go to the island, uh, you know, I wouldn't be 
I wouldn't be overly worried, but you know, it def- definitely poses a little bit more of a threat. And one more league thing: you dealt, you did this in free agency, and and, and you were fortunate to get get a, a, the contract. John Klingberg did not get the long term contract he was looking for. Any surprise there? Uh yes, yes, and no. Um, it's it's hard at, at a certain age, I think, for teams to to want to give you know long term deals. Some some teams are willing to do it, and. It just depends, you know. The market can all of a sudden collapse, and and you got nothing there. You know, it's uh, it, we've seen it happen before, where a player wants to wait just a little bit longer. The next thing you know, the whole market is gone. You know, not not there. There's just no more options, and teams don't want to do anything. They've put their wallet away, and and they're good. So it, it just seemed like it was almost one of those situations. But he can he can you know he can be a very very good player. And he's a deadline pickup right now. Like, 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 like you could obviously see a scenario at the deadline where the Capitals are like, "Hey, we need another right shot defenseman," and all of a sudden you're, you're you're making a trade to get somebody like that, or another contender like Pittsburgh or whatever to get Klingberg at the deadline. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, that that is is probably what's going to happen, right? Someone sure. someone will someone will do that. You know what we did with Shattenkirk that one year. It's, yep. Uh, it's most likely uh, going to happen. I w- I would assume. Um, but yeah, I, I think he's 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 definitely an, uh, a player that can make a major impact offensively um i don't know what he's like in the dressing room at all but but typically those uh scandinavians are are pretty solid people so i could imagine that he would be <laughs> nice to have on a team well so, we- yeah interesting uh, it, tough to leave uh texas with that with that tax bracket but you know he, he do, did what he had to do yeah one year seven million speaking of scandinavian people when we come back on all caps we're gonna talk about freshly married nick backstrom uh and, and also a little bit on the juan soto trade and, and and what the nationals look like that the capitals don't look like several years after winning a championship welcome back to all caps with former capitals fans from carl alster i'm ap hack writer steve wino uh congratulations to nicholas backstrom uh freshly married uh very small wedding carl but a few year old teammates were able to get there yeah, some of them made made the trip out, which is really nice to see. It's it's fun. It's fun when uh, it's fun for everyone when you get to see see the crew kind of get together and and do stuff away from hockey, right? You get so few opportunities during the season to kind of let loose, and um, now with social media, everything gets documented, so you get to get to see. But I I, I love when when uh, we get to see a little bit of uh, the fun Nick Backstrom, right? See him hopping <laughs> yeah. around there and, and dancing and stuff, and. Um, you know, I, I know a few people posted a couple of videos and he's just, you know, he's just a, just an awesome person. Lisa's wife is great. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm very happy for them. And, you know, it, it, it was sweet though. It's a hard, it's one of the hard things with weddings. <laughs> Anyone who, who's had to plan a wedding is the guest list. You know, it's probably the hardest thing to do is figuring out who's, who's going to come, who isn't going to come, where you draw the line. Are you going to have a destination wedding where, that is going to eliminate a lot of people too, and so it was. It was really nice to see that that uh, some teammates were able to make their way out there. Everyone's talking about his hip looks looks good. Here's the thing, I, and, and, and I know we've discussed the, the the hip surgery for Nick, but even if he never gets a chance to play again, I'm glad he got the hip surgery for his quality of life because you don't want him walking around at 45, 50 years old not being able to kind of enjoy his life. So we all hope Nick can play again, but more than anything, I hope that that surgery and everything gets rid of the pain for the rest of his life. Absolutely. It's such a, it's so hard to tell yourself that, you know, that you need to look in the future because we're so many of us are so used to living, you know, like even, even just a month down the road, maybe a year, maybe a couple of years, but to actually think about, you know, what 20 years is going to look like is, is hard for a lot of people. And, and we kind of abuse the bodies every now and then thinking that it's just going to bounce back. And then all of a sudden one day it stops bouncing back. Right. And so you, it's good for him to, to be able to do that. And, uh, you know, I'm hoping that he's he's tracking well to come back and at least give it a shot and and uh, you know get some get some more games in and then maybe get back into it full time. But you know I, I think that the expectations need to be somewhat low and then hopefully he can surprise us all. But it was a, it was a good play, I think to. You know, to think about the overall quality of life. Yeah, and, and yeah, we all, we do all hope he can play. Uh, but Nick signs a long term contract. Alex has a long term contract. John Carlson long term contract. In addition to Commanders, I was out at Nationals Park the other day for the Juan Soto trade, and it it was just jarring to me that this is th- less than three years since the Nats won the World Series, and, and comparing to the, to the Capitals, who in eighteen, sure there are a handful of guys who who have left since then, but the Capitals are still competitive, winning in a salary cap sport 
which explains to me so much of how good Brian McClellan and this organization is at handling it compared to how much of a disaster the Nationals have been. Yeah, it not it crazy to think that, that the, the look is so different? And so it begs the question, do, do players not like playing in D.C.? Is there something going on with ownership? I know that there's been talks about uh, the team being sold and all that stuff. It's just, it's, it's just, a, it's, it's so interesting to me how it can, how it can turn like that. Um, well, owner, it, it doesn't help that, that it do- doesn't seem like ownership is willing to pay nationals players the way the Ted Leonsis is willing to pay capitals players. Right. There's that, but then, you know, depending on if it, if the team is actually going to be sold, can, you know, do you, do you commit however many millions, $400 million or whatever to a player and then, and then sure. I, I mean, before this, I mean, even before Soto, I mean, even not being willing to pay Trey Turner a year ago or extend uh, or extend uh, uh, Max Scherzer, that sort of thing. Your, the ownership question is legitimate. I just think a lot of mistakes have been made to get to this point. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably, it's probably a good point. And who knows, maybe there was already, you know, one foot out the door. And so that's why that stuff was, was sure. the way it was, but, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's unfortunate. And that's what I was saying to you too. Like imagine, Imagine Ovi got got let go when he was 23, 24 years old. How different DC would be um, as a hockey market and and the team over the over the years, right? It's it's just such a it's an interesting uh, thought if if it would have been done in hockey as well because you know that's what Soto could have potentially done for this for this area. I know baseball is already big, but could have even taken it to to the next level. I keep seeing all these things where. People are asked like who in three years who's going to be the best player in the league and and his name gets thrown out there a bunch so you know it, it's tough to see a player of that caliber um, you know not be part of the organization he he sells tickets right people buy tickets to go and watch him play and uh, and to not have that anymore is is too bad I think it's also like a weird baseball and other sports kind of cultural thing compared to hockey because Juan Soto wants to go to free agency. No matter what happens, he'll be 26, 27 years old, and he wants to cash out in free agency. Hockey guys, McDavid, as soon as he was done as his entry level, signed the longest longest, longest contract possible. Alex signs a 13-year contract. You went to free agency and signed, uh, what, a five-year year deal? Like It seems like hockey players want as much security, and in baseball and basketball specifically, guys want to bet on themselves over and over and over again. It's just kind of a different perspective. Yeah, it really is, and I'm not sure if it's. It, yeah, I have, I have no idea exactly what the reason is there, but it, it 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 is all about security, you know. For I know it can happen in baseball, but hockey, same thing with an with an injury, you sure. know, it could all of a sudden change your your whole career, right? Just like that. So you want to try and lock yourself in as as soon as you can to to have something there. And plus, you you know, it's not really that fun to to move around and, and take your family from place to place. You know, you, I guess you get to experience a different living in a different city but uh for me it was never never something i wanted to do i wanted to to put down some roots so um so yeah it it is just a different dynamic different cultures and stuff like that but these guys are going signing you know 20 million dollar deals um i can understand why they want to just go and bet on themselves to to go and get another one the next year and the next year and 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 hit uh hit a couple couple lotteries so it's just different you know it's different sport it's hard to it's really hard to compare the two. Like I just saw the other, was it today? LeBron James, two year, was it two year ninety seven million dollar deal? Is that absurd. right? I don't something like that. Yeah, the, I don't know if that's uh, official or not. I heard it on the radio, but it's just a it's just a different different animal. A lot all the sports compared to hockey. Yeah, uh, it, you know, it is. But it just, to me, it just, it just speaks to how good the Capitals have been at, at being able to stay competitive this long because in a salary cap sport and the Penguins too I'll, I'll, we got to give the Penguins credit for, for this period of time too but for the Capitals to be this good from the time basically before you even entered the league until now missed the playoffs one time it, it is absurd when you consider other teams and other dynasties and how fast it can fall apart oh it really is and it's one of the things I think that goes into um, the thought during free agency right is you want to go to a team that that's competitive and if you can rely on on an organization to do everything possible to be competitive. That's, that's something that, you know, it checks a box for a lot of players. So it, it is very, very impressive and it helps that you have the best, the top two best goal scorer of all time, pretty much uh, on your team. And, and one of the best passers we've had in, in the game on the team, you know, th- those things definitely help the team be successful, but you know, you have to have great management. You have to have great ownership and coaches that are willing to, to find ways to win and, and not just you know let things kind of completely slide and, and fall apart and then tear it all down. So yeah, it, it's a 
I've said this to, to everybody. It's a, it's an unbelievably well-run organization. And I think it's starting to be known a lot more around the league. And, and I'm very happy to see that because, because the, the, the caps and the area need, need to have a lot of credit. Yeah, and, and, and even Alex last year, when he didn't have a contract, none of us were sitting around thinking like, oh, he's going to go play for the Kings or he's going to go. Like, we had never any doubt that he was going to come back. Yeah, I, I mean, it would be it would be such a shock if that if that were to happen. I, I don't I don't think that, yeah, crossed anybody's mind. So it's uh, I think it says something to, uh, like we said, the city and, and the organization. And he's got a pretty, pretty tight relationship with Ted. I think we all know that, too. And um, yeah, so it's it's just not. I mean, o- Ovi is Washington. Washington is Ovi. It's, uh, I don't think it's ever going to change. And as long as he's playing in the, in the National Hockey League, the Capitals are going to be a, a competitive uh, franchise. Uh, thanks, everybody, for listening on All His Caps. Next week, we will be joined by NBC Sports Washington's Brian McNally. Carl, we'll talk to you next week. All right. Sounds good.